Hello fellow hunters, welcome to my channel. First of all, I want to start off by saying Bloodborne was the most challenging game I ever played in my life. If I ever played this game again later down in the future, which I plan not to, I have to be very masochistic at that time to be able to play this game again because this drove me freaking crazy. First of all, the game, as a newbie, has no tutorials whatsoever. So I feel as you newbies, new hunters out there, you're not getting what you need right in the beginning of the game. You don't know how to do things. All you can do is just follow other hunters who have delved into the insanity of old Yarnum. And figured out the secrets and the mysteries of what Bloodborne had to offer. And I don't know what to say. I came out somewhat sane. Or maybe I'm just insane. I went a little crazy. So from the very beginning of this game. I was thrown into a situation with no weapons at all. No knowledge of what to do. And no story. At least in Demon Souls, I had some cool intro, but this one, it's like you're in a hospital receiving a blood transfusion, you're signing a contract, and then you hear a beautiful, sweet voice in the background. Ah, oh, you found a new hunter. So that gives me somewhat of an idea what my role is in the game. I love that woman, by the way. However, you don't know that the game expects you to die immediately. When I first downloaded this game and played, didn't know that whatsoever. I thought you had to kill the werewolf. Nope, it was supposed to kill you, so let it kill you, okay? That was my first issue. The second problem, I didn't know how to equip my weapons. So when you die and you're thrown into the hunter's dream, and you're like all weary and shit and you come across an abandoned doll and then you see all these options of weapons and you pick your weapons you pick a like for me instance i picked the hunter's axe and i picked the pistol and then you realize how do i equip this shit okay and there's nothing telling you how to access this so I had no idea there was all these extra steps I had to do. So I go back into the freaking reality world with no weapons equipped. And I'm wondering why the hell I keep dying. Where is my weapon? How do I access this shit? And then come to find out there's a way to access your inventory. And my dumb butt didn't think that you had to press the options button. By the way... If PlayStation controller, press the option button, and you'll access your inventory. And through there, you can figure out how to plug in your weapon into your slot so you can have access to, that, to it. For those who still don't know, just do that, okay? Or just watch another crazy uh, YouTuber that's playing Bloodborne that is a veteran player and who's not me because... I'm a veteran now, but I didn't come back with my sanity, okay? To plead my case in this matter, mainly my ignorance. I'm a very ignorant person when it comes to souls born. Bloodborne was my entry level into this world that they call souls born. I didn't even know it's an exclusive club for deviant gamers. I'm just kidding. They're very welcoming. You're all hunter all new hunters are welcome i'm a new hunter and i don't know i'm just crazy but i have a few tips for the willing and the non-skilled because i am a non-skilled gamer i did plunge into this like a dumb fool who didn't even know how to access my own inventory so these are the type of games that break your soul more like it shatters me into pieces, okay? That's what it did. Believe me, it's taking some time for me to mend myself. I mean, my first playthrough was horrendous, but I feel like I have surpassed my insanity here. I think I'm healthy enough now to spit some helpful nonsense 
nonsense you see how i sound these days i think i lost my brain so i'm going to give you a little bit of advice especially for those newbie non-skilled gamers who have never touched a souls born from software blue point whatever type of game out there that plays like this and has similar mechanics i know lies of p everyone's waiting for lies of p at the moment i am currently waiting for that release am i gonna buy it on launch date Probably not. I want to see how everyone else handles that game. And if it has some really horrible glitches, like, uh, what was that? Cyberpunk? <laughs> okay, back to the story here. Advice number one. By the way, I have seven for you, just so you don't get bored. Well, if you get bored and you have ADHD like I do, you can click out and then click click back in and listen to me rant some more. I know this is not even going to be layered out into chapters. So back to advice number one. Choose the character that fits your skills, okay? The skills you want to have, okay? Go through each option carefully. Not like my dumb butt just rushing and just picking whatever cool character name out there, all right? View the stats, all right? You might need to start with a character with more vitality or a character with more defenses because the more you have of that, the more you can take a hit, meaning you can get a nice beautiful deck in the face and not die, okay? But just to prepare you, okay? You're going to die a lot. The bosses in here, some of them can do a one shot, okay? And knock you to the ground and make your life miserable. The trick to playing Bloodborne, I'm going to tell you now. It's about cultivating patience because it punishes the greedy. It really brings out the humility in you. This is about cultivating humility, people. The game wants you to balance between being a vicious hunter and a strategic one as well. I mean, you can't just be reckless. It wants you to get to know thy enemy, meaning your bosses, which means you must die a few times because most of the bosses in these games have at least two phases of attacks, okay? And each one is gnarlier than the other and they do not leave room for you to breathe. You're going to go crazy because you're going to be holding your breath too much. They're not going to allow you to breathe. Just a warning, just a warning, okay? This game is unforgiving. It does not forgive you if you get angry and you break your controller because you're so close to winning against a really difficult boss. No, that's your fault. All right, advice number two. Choose the right weapon based on your build. All right, you're cultivating a build. Don't stray from it. For me, I started off with this strength build, primarily using the hunter's axe. Therefore, most of my earned blood echoes, which is the currency in this game, went into my strength stat. You have different stats that you can upgrade. Mine, I upgraded in strength. If you choose the saw cleaver or the threaded cane, that is mu that's mostly a dexterity weapon, which you, if you like it, then you're going to upgrade your dexterity build, which you're going to put more into skill. You're going to put it into skill, you're going to put it into stamina, and you're going to put it into vitality. Unlike me, I didn't choose that route. It goes into strength, okay? If you want to be good with the pistol or the blunderbuss, you're going to upgrade the blood tinge, okay? Then it does a little bit more damage and helps you more with parrying, which is not my thing, by the way. I avoided the pistol often. That's because I actually wanted to build a strength build slash arcane build because I wanted to use the variety of hunter's tools that you will be collecting throughout the game and you're gonna be like what is this nasty looking thing what does it do oh it does that also it helps increase the damage of using elemental magic that means your fire paper your bolt paper or even using other types of weapons that 
require you that spits out one of those elemental shits against your foe so that meant if i wanted to do that i had to balance what i upgraded so it had to go between strength arcane vitality and stamina and then i rarely put any effort into blood tinge because I have a pistol, but I rarely use it, okay? Advice number three. Open all shortcuts, people. Do not avoid the shortcuts. Always open it up. There are some areas I just ran through it like a crazy maniac because it had all the awful things I didn't want to deal with. And I opened up that shortcut, made my life easier, and I was able to look around the area after that and get the things I need. Sometimes that's what you need to do. I only recommend this if you do not have a full amount of blood echoes available to you. Spend it all and then go do the run, okay? Because otherwise you're going to lose all your blood echoes i guarantee you as a beginner you're going to freaking die you're not going to have enough stamina to get past a lot of the foes that are in those locations that i had to utilize that skill advice number four insight you have blood echoes as a currency but you also have insight insight is the root of madness in this game you can purchase things with insight, but majority of the time you want to use it to at least summon old hunters or another online hunter. That's why at a certain point in the game, you're going to receive an old hunter's bell and another summoning bell to summon other hunters online that you can have them assist you in the game. You don't have to do this game alone. It is a co-op option for co-op if you want to. So I save my insight for that. Also, you also need insight to access the doll. You need at least one and then she's the only way to upgrade your character in the game. There is no other way of doing it. You can upgrade your weapon. You can upgrade uh, what ruin you have. You can collect shit. But to upgrade your hunter itself, meaning its skill, vitality, stamina, blood tinge, you need to have at least one insight in your slot to access the doll. At the beginning of the game, by the way, you can gain access to her after consuming the first madman knowledge that you find. There's madman's knowledge. It's a skull with a little flame coming out of it, I think. Or you can try your luck with the cleric beast. Actually, I think you only have to look at it and it will give you an insight. But after defeating the cleric beast, it'll definitely get some insight. However, the downfall of that, you might die. But at least you'll get some insight. Just make sure when you die, you don't have blood echoes of in your slot okay that you got rid of it actually you know what without activating the doll <laughs> you kind of just lose those blood echoes so don't do that never mind all right the downside of having a lot of insight is the fact that you know the bosses will do crazier attacks on you there's more of a chance that you're going to have a difficult time fighting your enemies with more insight, especially the bosses. The more insight you obtain, the more enemies become complex and the more the hidden secrets are revealed to you in Yarnum. So, to avoid this, just don't have as much insight in your slot. It also, just to warn you, there are creatures in certain areas of the game, meaning the brain suckers, that can steal your insight. So not only they rip your, the life out of you, sucking your head dry, it takes a few, a, a, at least one or two insight. It depends on the brain sucker. There's two types. Another tip 
revolving around that. So before entering the Hemwick Boss Arena and Hemwick Channel Lane, I want you to sell all your insight. That's my recommendation. And then enter the arena. If you have zero, the boss is not going to spawn. But if you manage to get one insight while activating the boss fight, it's cool. There's a hunter's mark you're going to receive in the game. Use that and transport transport your behind out of the arena and then go back to the hunter's dream and sell off your insight and then you go return to the arena again believe me it's going to make the fight a lot easier and it will be so much easier you're just dealing with the very warded looking witches which you know they could be pretty nasty themselves to deal with but it's so much easier and you'll gain access to the ruin workshop tool which you're going to need that because then you can equip ruins to your character and that could be more stamina more vitality more blood files available to you even bring up your defenses so get that as soon as possible when you gain access to the cathedral ward all right, following this advice, number five, avoid consuming the madman's knowledge and the cold blood dews, okay? Keep them in your inventory. Don't you consume them right away. Only use them sparingly when you need them. The reasons why, remember I mentioned, there's the brain sucker, is this certain point you're gonna come across them and they can steal your insight from you along with your life. So to avoid a losing a lot of insight, just keep your madman's knowledge in your inventory. Same thing with your cold blood dues, because with dying so many times, you're going to lose your blood echoes. And you only have one opportunity to regain the blood echoes you lost from your last death. After that, if you don't get them and you die again, that's it. You're, it's done. All those beautiful blood echoes, all that hard work goes down the drain, okay? So I keep that into storage. It's kind of like having a savings account, okay? And then, after that, you don't have to worry about it. You can just die and be like, I have all this in my savings. I don't need to worry about this. Oh, F you, brain suckers. I have more insight in my inventory. All right, back to the advice. Advice number six. You always want to repair your weapon before any fight. Before you enter a location, just go to your workshop and repair your weapon. You'll be surprised how fast certain weapons, the durability will go down to zero and it will be useless. You want to upgrade your weapon often because it will make it easier for you to fight the enemy, the newer enemies that are in different locations, and you want to equip them with uh, gems, okay? Slaying your enemy is much easier with a maintenance weapon. Make sure you stick to two primary weapons, okay? So for me, I made sure my hunter's axe was top notched okay i maxed that junk out don't waste resources on other types of weapons okay i i got locked into that and i spent so much resources and you can't get those resources back and you don't realize at a certain point you're not going to get any more blood chunks to be able to get your weapon all the way to at least nine and there's only one area in the main game that has a blood rocks a blood rock that maxes your weapon out the other one is in the hunter's dlc if you have the hunter's dlc then you have a little bit more leeway on getting another blood rock and more blood chunks which are you know the main materials to get your weapon top notch especially before the end of the game otherwise you're going to be stuck having to get into new game plus to upgrade the weapons that you want to upgrade but ensure 
to equip the right gems to your weapon because it will increase the damage and many other things. It might increase its durability and reduce the amount of stamina that you use, especially for a, a strength weapon such as the Hunter's Axe. All right, following advice number seven, raid the chalice dungeons. If you want to gain more resources, go into the chalice dungeons. You can access various gems, shards, and even find chunks. And you're going to be able to upgrade your weapon if you wasted your resources from the main game and the DLC. Also, you can gain more insight that way. So if you weren't smart and you started just consuming your madman's knowledge to bring up your insight and everything like that, and it gets lost, stolen by the brain suckers, you have an opportunity to regain them back through the Chalice Dungeons. As well as gaining more madmen knowledge to consume. I would not do that, by the way. Consume them. And Cold Blood Dews. The resources can be limitless in the dungeons. And if you use your insight to purchase the makeshift chalice, you have even more access to different dungeons and similar dungeons and getting the same materials over and over and over again. Or you can search one of the glyphs that are still working and gain access to a dungeon that could give you a lot of blood echoes without much work. So that could be a lifesaver or a time saver. It's whatever how you view it if you want you need extra help to get through the game. Plus there are a variety of beasts to hunt in the dungeons. That's another good sales pitch right there. And they are much more challenging than the main game and the DLC combined. These are, there are interesting beasts down there, so I suggest you check it out. Therefore, don't skip the chalices. I recommend this advice above all the others, even though I went down all the way to seven. Okay, good. I think I'm done with this. This is enough for you to get by, at least in the main game. If you made it this far in the video, here's a special tip for you. I found a glitch for Father Gascoin. Gascoin is one of the most toughest bosses in the beginning of the game to get past because if you don't get past him, you do not progress in the game. Father Gascoin is kind of like a slap in the face. He was put there to give you an idea what the game is going to be like as you move along. He's a tough boss, but he's preparing you for the end. So it gives you an idea how much you need to upgrade because the final boss of the game is going to be much harder than he is. But Father Gascoin can be managed. I did say I found a glitch. So what you do is you run up the stairs and you jump onto that roof of that so-called shed that you see in the distance there. That's also where you find the dead wife, his dead wife, and the broge. He's gonna follow after you. Fight him on the roof and keep knocking him off, okay? Suppose you can parry him and get a visceral attack while on the roof, fantastic. But if not, Whack him off the roof and decrease his health bar that way. I notice through two playthroughs, he doesn't shift into his second phase. And it's his second phase that gets everyone. It's just really gnarly attacks when he's in his werewolf form. So he doesn't go into his second phase when you fight him on the roof. And if he knocks you off the roof, just run back to the staircase and get back to the roof. Well, I think that's it for today, folks. I hope you all can progress past him and continue your experience with the game because it's an awesome game. <laughs> and by the way, the actual hunt doesn't begin until you access the Forbidden Forest. Keep that in mind. That's what you're preparing yourself for. 
But either way, happy hunting. But to officially end this video, I'll somewhat quote the doll from Bloodborne. Farewell, good hunters. May you all find your worth in the waking world.